I'm in my element when I'm at sea because I grew up with boats. My dad's always worked with boats. We've got another hour of this bumpy journey and I am absolutely busting for a pee. To be honest, for me, speed boats and alcohol go hand in hand because there was always like liquor flowing when I was younger. So I wouldn't mind a drink even though it's not even 10 a.m. yet. But um, I can't really think about doing that until I've had a piss. I was travelling to the southernmost island of the Inner Hebrides, the Isle of Isla, home to more whisky distilleries than any other Scottish island. Isla has a reputation for producing a smokier, more robust series of malts, which is a result of using peat, poorly drained soil made of decomposed vegetable matter. I chose to visit Brook Laddie, which is not only one of the oldest distilleries on the island, but is famous for making the world's most heavily peated whisky. I'm not quite ready for the hard stuff yet, so I'm um, lining my stomach with some Tunnock's tea cakes produced here in Scotland. I used to have these in my lunch box when I was a wee lassie. I wonder if they still taste as good. I don't think I've had one of these for years. Oh, mm -hmm. just like I remember. Sort of nothing to it. Marshmallowy stuff and air. Who'd have thought it? Mm. I can't think of a more appropriate way to enjoy a Tunnock's tea cake. Time for some whiskey. I think I'm already drunk off the sea air. It's so good. Oh. Hi, buddy. Hey, little guy. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good to meet Welcome you. Welcome to Rafati. Thank you, I can't believe I'm here, I'm so excited. We should crack on. Wow, this is what I envisage when I think about making whiskey. I hadn't expected to fall so drunk in love with Brooke Laddie. Kate gave me the grand tour, explaining how committed they are to using most of the original equipment installed by their Victorian forefathers. But what I was really here for was to try their most cherished and smokiest whiskey, the legendary Octomore. The Octomore is a real cult whiskey, people love it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In fact, we had a guest here from the States uh, quite a few years ago, and she really, really loved it. And you, we, when we're making it, we all go home smelling of this stuff. Well, this woman came in one night and she just hung her clothes up around the outside of the mash tun so that she could go home and smell of the optimal whiskey. It takes all sorts. Kate showed me around the distillery to see how the Optimal was made. Like all whiskey, its life begins as a grain of barley. Here you'll see the different, different types of, of barley we've got. Have a smell. Okay. Have a taste. Oh, that's weird. So that's the length it of time. It tastes like smoke. This is, where, this is the fermentation. So this will be the next one to go through to the stills. So don't take a deep breath, but uh, have a smell. Oh. It's very active at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a top note of Stilton. <laughs> How close to being like the whiskey we'd get in a bar, in a bottle? Yeah, this is, this is like beer at the moment. This is beer. Do you know what it tastes like? It tastes like I've put beer on my Weetabix. Where to next? All right, we're going to go into the still house, the next part of the process, the distillation. Oh, that smells nice. I'm getting excited now. I've just realised what this smells like. It smells like when you've got a whiskey hangover and you can feel the whiskey coming off you in the morning. I couldn't come in here if I had a hangover. That would be the end of me. And what's the alcohol content at this so we're, stage? We're talking about 68, 69%. So uh, have a taste, have a sip, have a smell. Oh God, it's, no. it, ta it tastes delicious though, but it's very sweet. It's like burning my eyes. <laughs> it, it feels like it's evaporating, <laughs> like there's so it many fumes be. coming it off be. it. Mm. 
It feels re Woo! There you go. Ah! <laughs> it feels really nice in your mouth. Yeah. It's like syrupy and warm. But has, does anybody ever just want to bottle that and drink that? Well, we have. Is that called moonshine? That's, yeah, well, in the States, they'll call it white dog. But it's very high strength. You're talking 86, 87, 88 percent. Yeah. But we sold that as the X4 and very, very popular. What have we got here? So, the big one. The big one. So this is the Optimal Whiskey. The Cult Whiskey. The Cult Whiskey. The world's peatiest whiskey. Yeah, peated. So this is peated 167 parts per million. Your average kind of peaty whiskey, about 40, 45. Oh, wow. So way ahead. But it's ahead. going through all the same stills and the same process. That is delicious. It's like you're almost having a spoonful of like hot caramel sauce or something. Yeah. I mean, I am a whiskey fan mm. and I'm also, you know, fascinated with modern and sorry, I don't think I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you're well. the best. Thank you so much. Old. I would <laughs> or stay and you can go and I'll have your job. That would no. be uh, the ideal <laughs> scenario. Um so I'm staggering out of the uh, distillery Brook Laddie. It was amazing. It's only just lunchtime and I've already had my five a day, five meaning drinks and I've got a souvenir to take with me of my namesake whiskey. What an amazing morning drinking beautiful whiskey and now I've got to get back on that boat for two hours. I don't know if it's we I'll be worried about, maybe more like sick. I hope I can find my sea legs again. <laughs> I left Isla with ample time to sober up as I made my way up to the neighbouring island of Mull. The stunning west coast of Scotland is well known for its premium quality of seafood. The cold, clear waters on this side of the coast are considered one of the best fishing zones in the world. I was off to meet a chap called John who was going to teach me how to catch lobster, and his wife, Carla, was going to show me how to cook one. We came out of the ferry port and turned left, and we've been on the same road for about an hour, just this one narrow road. For all I can tell, it's the only road on the island. Um, our sat-nav doesn't know where we are. We've gone into a portal to another dimension. It's bizarre. I've never been anywhere so lifeless. No humans, no animals, just rocks and grass. You kind of get the feeling that you're in a horror movie and um, we're never coming home. <laughs> Hi John. Lovely day for it. Lovely blue hand. You're a lot better prepared than me. I can see you've done this before. <laughs> I might need a hand. I don't mind a glove. Thanks. You don't know where that's been, dear. <laughs> How long per day are you out on the boat? Uh, usually it's about six hours. On your own? Yes. How, how many years have you been doing that? About 30. Many things to look at. Yeah. Look at the scenery. I mean, ah. This is one of your spots. This is the end of a fleet of ten creels. This is the creel. Have we got anything? Yeah, there's hmm, not a lot. That's a bucket, what you call whelks. I don't keep them. It's a velvet crab carrying eggs. So that goes back as well. Now I just cut the fish, fish in half to open it up, put it in the bait pouch. Then I shut the door, this goes back in the water, lobster smells the fish, comes along wanting a feed, climbs up in there, drops down and then can't find his way out again. Well, that's the theory. Keeps you fit, this job. Ah, that accounts for my sylph-like figure. 
I lost the boat once. You lost the boat? Yes. Wow. I capsized by a, an unusual wave. I wouldn't have made it if I hadn't been wearing the life jacket. Hey ho! See, that's my lobster measure. That's exactly the right size. Yes! Hi, you look delish. What are you doing now? I'm putting rubber bands on its claws to immobilise them. There was an old fella I was speaking to. He was telling me he caught a big lobster once. And the, there's the nipper claw and the cruncher claw. And he said the cruncher claw on it, which is much duller, it tips on it. I'm not slower moving. Got him right on the ball of the thumb, like that. And the two tips of it met in the middle. Aww. <laughs> if you want to take that with you and give it to Carla and tell her that's the one you're to have for dinner. Look at that. From the sea. And we're going to be eating you later. I'm going to call you Kendrick. Kendrick Lobstar. I am a lobster, probably never swim again. Can't wait to get you in my belly, Kendrick. Right? What is that? Kendrick's rapping. He's laying down some verses. He's spitting some bars. Hiya, Come Carla. Yes. Wow, you look amazing. Thank you. How are you? I'm good, and you? I'm great. I didn't get the memo. Is it a special occasion? It's just uh, every every second Tuesday a steampunk I love it. Tuesday in the kitchen. So you got you've got a ship in your hair. Well, that's yes, quite... it's for Johnny. Yes, as a tribute to the old husband there. This is our little kitchen. This is Fedra from Hungary. Wow. She's my right hand man. This is Fiona. She's our cleaning lady. A lady with a mustache. <laughs> so we caught this guy. Great. Maybe you could show me how it's done and then we could eat him. He's called Kendrick. Kendrick. Right. That sounds good. I name everything. Yeah? Well, maybe not every lobster I kill, otherwise it would be a bit strange. The daily bread is called Fluby. He gets reincarnated every day. Why Fluby? I have no idea, it just came to me in a dream. So what are we going to do with Kendrick? It's going to be a Thai wonton. It's a Tom Yum Kung soup, but we're putting wontons in it, which are traditionally Chinese. How do you kill lobsters? Because I've heard that, you know, the old myth, you throw them in a pot and they scream and... Well, what we found is the quickest. Plunge them into a large pot of boiling water or stab them in the brain with a butcher knife. His brain will be dead in a couple seconds. There we go. And he'll be dead by now, well dead by now. And the rest is just involuntary movement of the body. There's sweet, sour, hot, and salty. Those are the four Thai flavors. If you don't have those balanced properly, you don't have a Thai dish. Is that enough? That's a bit, that's a bit ambitious, I must say. We'll never get it closed. Kind of like my trousers lately, never mind. Okay, it's never trust a skinny chef. This is the most wonderfully incongruous experience. I'm in a kitchen, I can, it smells like I'm in Southeast Asia. I look out of the window and I'm in Scotland and I look at you and who knows where we are. We're in a nightclub in Soho. You're on another planet, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been out with him on the... Oh, yeah, I used to go out on the boat, but, but um, until a rope caught around my leg and I almost got thrown overboard, that was a bit too much for me. It lost its romantic appeal, I'm afraid. And the crispy wonton's done now. Get in my mouth. Enjoy. It should be able to mm. still taste the lobster. Mm. It should be enhanced by mm. the flavors rather than overpower. The sauce doesn't overpower it at all. Does it taste like the sea? It doesn't taste like the sea, but I think <laughs> it's probably a good thing. <laughs> Kendrick's looking pretty good. He really now. is. Yeah, I think he would have been pleased to know that he's turned out as a lovely wonton. 
Oh. Hello, Kitty. How are you? John, is that you? Oh, it's got a steampunk coat on. Yeah, the previous incarnation was a figment of your diseased imagination. Nice so... sail, chap. So the past couple of days have been crazy. When you go to the places like that, kind of deserted islands, for a minute you think, oh my God, this is incredible. Like, this is how everybody should live. Fuck the city, I'm leaving. I'm just gonna come and like live here and grow vegetables. But then you think, oh, actually it would get a bit boring. I don't know how I'd actually do it. You know, when you're from London, you feel like you're at the center of everything. You go there and you see these people that are just doing the most mad, incongruous stuff. And I could have hung out with them for days. Anyway, I won't stop you working, but okay, I'll, thank I'll sit you. and talk to um, okay. one of my friend here with the moustache. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is just dig a wee hole over here. Just don't clunk it down. Do I look like a clunker? Yeah. Because that's how scallops should be done. Sizzle, eat them. You can't beat fish and chips. Ours are superior. Let me get some. It's going to be a fucking tricky job. <laughs>